Rahubat, greetings and welcome to episode 11. Wow, we've only got one more episode to go, so if you haven't got your questions answered yet, make sure you get your questions in today and for next week. Like your questions so that they can get moved to the top. My name is Saken. My name is Asaru. And we are here for you to ask us anything. anything. All right, so, um, yeah, one thing I realise is that sometimes we take it for granted that the people that are going to watch the episode have been watching all the episodes mm. from before, yeah? So um, you may be new, so that's mm. why some of the questions are being repeated over and over and over. So if you're new, go back and watch all the episodes from one and come all the way to 10 and now we're on 11 so you can catch up. But we will answer the questions anyway um, if you're new to the channel. So as a matter of introduction, we answer questions based on our culture known as Wu Sabat. Um, some may know it as Wu Nuwap. Um, we're known by many titles as Nuwapians, Sabians, Holy An Tabernacle Ministries, Ansarla, Ansarla <laughs> the Ansarla community, um, many, many titles because of the way we went about our studies. Um, you've heard us say many times that we were taken on a long journey on a short path which is um, basically the way our master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. K. York, um, Parnabab Yanun, the way he taught us, he is a 720 degree being, meaning that he covers the full circumference of physical information, which makes up 360 degrees, and the full circumference of what people term spiritual information, mm. Um, and that's 360 degrees again. The reason we use 360 degrees is because it's a circle. A circle is um, completeness. So you add the two together, you get a 720 degrees of knowledge. All right. So he took us through submerging us in the different schools of religion, especially the three monotheistic ones. That's Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And then we moved on to further studies covering the, um, what people call the Kemetian or the ancient Egyptian studies. We studied the, uh, the Sumerian Sumerian. texts, mm -hmm. um, plus many, many other things, scientific information, um, extraterrestrial information. Mm -hmm. Basically, as we graduated, we were being walked back into our culture, which is Wu Sabat, because Wu Sabat is the root, and this is why we're able to tie everything back and able to answer any and all questions put to us. All right? So, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything to that introduction. No, no, you're good. All right, okay, let's get into <laughs> let's the get, questions. Let's get on to the questions. All right, see. yeah, let's see what we have today. <laughs> all right, so the first question. Um, yeah, I don't always pronounce everyone's names or tags because some of them are just hard to pronounce. But this is D Shelton six double four zero. So, is there salvation needed for our souls? Is there a creator of all that needs to be pleased and worshipped? What is the name of the creator of all? Are we only to pray to the ancestors? Are your loved ones from your bloodline who die older or younger than you immediately become your ancestors? Or is there a waiting period? Is, if there is a creator of all, what do they want from us? He's cheating, isn't he? He's had about six questions in one, but it's all good. He, he, he's worked out the formula of getting a lot of questions answered. <laughs> But let's, let's, we're going to do them quick because there's a lot, all right? Yeah. Is there salvation needed for our souls? Um, Wusabat. <laughs> yeah, that, Wusabat is the answer to everything. But um, <laughs> salvation. Mm. With Wusabat, what we have to do is break down words, okay? The word salvation um, comes from the word Slavic, 
which is related to slavery mm. and being saved. Um, so what are you being salvaged from? So salvation is not for your soul. You're actually salvaging, well, in, in a way it is, but your, your body is really what, because your, your other question says, um, is it needed for our souls? The salvation is needed for you physically because mm. your soul is actually free, but it's trapped within your physical body. And this is where the slavery is taking place because you can only enslave the physical body. You can't enslave the soul because the soul <coughs> is um, timeless, limited, mm. um, limitless, sorry. And um, so, yeah, the salvation is really for you. This is why whilst you're alive, you've got to get salvation because you've got to be freed from the bondage and the slavery that you find yourself in physically and mentally. Okay, so um, I don't know, anytime you want to that, chip in. That, that would yeah. tie in, into the 33 um, spirits also, um, genetic kiss as well. Yeah, so, so your spirits um, are binded because remember that your soul is separate from your spirit. I remember the first time we broke down on our first video that <laughs> everything has a spirit, but not everything had a soul. Yep. Some people were like, oh, what are you talking about? And we had to explain <laughs> that, you know, trees, animals, rocks, um, things like that, they all have spirits, Spirit. but they don't have a soul. And some humans have spirits and don't have a soul. And that's not based on just colour or anything. It's just your, your, your soul is the emotional part mm. of you. Yeah. But let me carry on because you've got a lot of questions. Um, is there a creator of all that needs um, to be pleased and worshipped? No. Um, again, we have to break down the word. When you say creator of all, mm. you have to break away from the religious concept of what a creator is. Um, so you have to deal with what is creation. The word creation if you don't read the language, you can get confused because there are different forms of creation. There's the word chalka in the language in the Hebrew, which means to bring something about from a new, for the first time. And then you have the word bara, which is mm. to reconstruct, to reconstruct, to refill, to mm. rebuild. Yeah. So you can only create things or grow things from things that already exist. So. We have already explained that depending on what you conceive as a creator, then you'll have different kind of like explanations. But we look at it as simply as your creator or creators are your mother and father and, and their mother and father and so on and so on. So there isn't like a one creator of all things. Mm. Um, this is religion. Religion teaches you that concept of yeah. there's one being and even then, when you start going into it, they contradict themselves mm. because there isn't one being. The names actually break down into plural or more than one. So no, there isn't a creator of all things. And, he, and if you think about it, does he need to be pleased or be worshipped? Mm. That is something that makes that being limited because if he has needs, then he doesn't have everything. So he needs someone to please him. And what does that mean? How can you please? That's an attribute of a, of a human, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, and, and what is work to be worshipped? And why would they need to be worshipped? So it's the religious concepts of, you know, the Bible and the Quran that give you this being that needs things. And he, he's needy. Mm. He, um, he, he, you know, if he does, he's a jealous God, for example. That's using emotions. Um, if you don't give him what he wants, he will destroy you. Yeah. You know, he sets you up to, to kind of fear him, for example. Why do you need to fear him? Why do you need to worship him? Why is he even a him? Mm. You know, these are the questions that Wu Sabat will debunk. Um, what is the name of the creator of all? We've just established there yeah. isn't a name for the creator of all. Now, if you're going by the biblical translations of the word, then there are different names. So mm. you'll have Elohim. Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai, yeah. Jehovah, and we can go on and on because um, the list is endless, but it's describing different attributes of these beings mm. known as the Anunnaki or the Anakim or the Elohim, um, which are just extraterrestrial beings. Um, 
the closest thing in the Bible, for example, they would say the all mm. or the most, or what we say the all, they yeah. would say the most, most high. high. Yeah. yeah. And in Arabic, they would say al kulum which means the all. Um, so um, it all depends on what you understand or overstand of a creator to be. And depending on which word we use, we can then break it down because Yahweh deals with agreeable and disagreeable. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, Elo means one who is over a group of beings, like the Elohim, which is the plural, which means more than one being. El Shad, it goes, it means literally demon. Mm. Um, El Shaddai, you know, so depending on which word um, we can then go into. But what we want to say is our concept, well, not even a concept, the best description of what you're trying to convey in a religious world is the all, mm. or pa pa ot in our language, which translates as the all expanding. Mm. Because all things are constantly expanding, you see? So um, one is the all, but then you exclude that definite article, you just have all. And you can't add to all, or take from, and yeah. you can't take away from all because where would you get it from to add it? You see, so I think the nearest thing they got to that in the in um, the movies was the George Lucas when they said um, the force. Mm, yeah, because we start to go into energies, mm. and and that's why we say um, the all is. All. Yeah. <laughs> We're using English, so it's yeah. kind of hard. That's why we go into our language because you're saying all conscious and conscience oh, gases, mm. which are constantly constantly expanding. Um, are we only to pray to the ancestors? Um, again, we have to break down what prayer is mm. and why do you need to pray? Um, and the prayer, prayer is the art of um, speaking without. Listening and meditation is the art of listening without speaking. Yes. So what we do is we have communication mm. with our ancestors. We don't pray to them as such. Um, we give reverence. We give gratitude. And um, we communicate with them just as if Talking they were right them. here with yeah. us. Because they are. They're just on a different realm or vibration. Mm. Are your loved ones from your bloodline who die older or younger than you immediately become your ancestors? Um, that question is a little bit confusing, but I, your loved ones are from your bloodline, yes, but you can love people that are not from mm -hmm. your bloodline too. Um, but another question you're asking is, if they die younger than you, do they immediately become your ancestors? No, because, I mean, they're part of your bloodline, but they're not your ancestors. Because yeah. if, you, if you break down what the word ancestor <laughs> is, it's got to be someone going backwards, Backward, yeah. not someone forward. So if someone's younger than you, then you're more likely to become their ancestor. Mm. And you have ancestors that are before you, see? So, yes. Um, is there a waiting period? Um, that question. Bloodline, who die? older or younger than you immediately become your ancestors. The older ones become your ancestors, mm. the younger ones are still in your bloodline, or is there a waiting period? There is a waiting period in terms of, um, you have different realms, and you can be in what people call a limbo state, yeah. because you have to conquer or... Mm. Um, Get rid of your carnal desires. Yes, yeah. on the different, burn out, that's yeah. more of an approach. Yeah. Burn out your desires on each realm, and then you progress further. Mm. So people keep coming back to the physical world if they're attached to physical things, mm. um, physical desires. So you kind of have to, because they draw you to this mm. side, because you know it's like a, it's like an addiction. Mm. Um, so yes, you have to burn out your desires on those realms, or when you're waiting in limbo before you moved on. If there is a creator of all, what do they want from us? There is no creator of all in that sense because you become a part of all, um, you know, because you're one with all and you can become a part of all. But they don't want anything from you <laughs> other than... So there's a hierarchy then, if you want to use that term to explain 
the different levels of creators. So you have your mother and father, then you have your ancestors, your grandma, mm. grandpa, great grandma, going all the way to what the oldest ones, which we know as the Parnatharu, the overseers. Mm. Um, so those are the ones that they, they basically are the top of the top, if you want to mm. use that. And then all together, we're all part of the all expanding or papa ut, yeah, in our language. And everyone is a part of that, but at different levels of vibration on different realms from the physical realm, which is the most dense and the material plane. And then as you progress high in vibration, it, it gets more in terms of density. Mm. Um, so I hope that's answered that question. That was a lot of different questions in one. Um, did you want to add anything to that, or should we move um, on to the next yeah, one? Yeah, I think w when they were talking about the, um, our ancestors just want us to acknowledge them, but obviously there are other beings that need blood That's a good point. Mm. negative energy to, to survive. Yeah, so it's about making a... That's a really good point, because mm. with religions and other beings intercepting, because they know that you're more powerful or the connection or communication with your ancestors is more potent, mm. they try to divert you or block you so that you don't get the full power. Mm. Because once you have that full power, then they don't feed off of your power. Mm. So yes, that's a very good point that they distract you so you don't connect with your ancestors. Mm. So you call on different beings that don't relate to you or connect with you. So this is why religion is a tool where they have us um, calling and worshipping or calling tones that vibrate with different beings mm. and different extraterrestrials that are not of our bloodline. Yep. And so they don't, they don't help you. This is why the master put out... Um, why no help from above? Why no help from above, you know, um, which is explaining that if you're not connecting, if you're dialing the wrong telephone number, you're not going to get through mm. or you're not going to get connected to the people you want to speak to. So, yeah, excellent. Right, let's move on. Question. Malachi says the dark-skinned angels have fallen from grace. While in the same breath he says Caucasians are the sons of Satan that he refers to as the fallen angels. What's the difference if both have fallen? It's a bit confusing. Let's not confuse you then. Mm. When we say we have fallen in grace, meaning that if you were nine ether and you have come down in terms of the way you, you, you're you not as, you're not dealing with what you're supposed mm. to be. So you're falling in grace in that way. So you, you don't behave and act in the way that you're supposed to be as a naive for being. So you're falling from grace in that mm. way, meaning that we were not taught um, things that we do now where we hate each other, kill each other, um, eat things we're not supposed to eat, listen to music and mm. things we're not really supposed to listen to. Um, and the list goes on, eat the foods we're not supposed to eat because these have an effect on you as a being. So you're not going to be... Um, as yeah, right, right frame of mind. Yeah. Right frame of mm -hmm. mind. So you're basically dumbing yourself so, down. Yeah. That's what he means by you falling from grace. Now, when he's talking about the fallen angels as the beings that came down from above, as in different planets, different constellations, like the Nephilims, that they fell, they came down or they were cast down here, that's separate. Mm. But also, the second part of your question, um, what's the difference if both have fallen? It's a bit confusing. Yeah, the, the, um, the dark skin just need to raise their vibration back up need to learn who and what they are and start to do the things they're supposed to do as a nine ether or a supreme being, using nine mind, thinking like a supreme mm. being. Um, whereas the other ones, the fallen angels, they're basically creating chaos on the planet and they're the ones that are making the nine ether being mm. fall down to their level, which is mainly six ether being. Um, so I don't know if you want to build. I wonder one. if he was talking when he's talking about the dark skin. If he's talking about the Hindus from Nevada that got expelled. Six, yes, six uh, that, billion years. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, but when you say dark skin, this is important mm. because um, it's not just about skin color. 
Um, it's more about the nature. Mm. But yes, in terms of black people, they use that word, um, but they're normally referring to these um, six ether Hindu mm. beings because the differentiation between nine ether or the supreme beings with other dark skin beings is the texture of hair. We have woolly hair and others have fur. fur yeah. So that makes a difference. And then you have Dravidians or the Dravadu who have dark skin, but they have straight six ether hair. Mm. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped and clarified the difference. Okay, number Young Chaz 60. What can we all do to help the effort with freeing the master teacher? I googled a few things, but mainly only slander comes up. Yes, that's by design. Mm, yep. um, one of the things you can do is to bring awareness to his case, because a lot of people don't even know the injustice that has taken place. So by learning and knowing about the case, that the facts of the case, not the gossip and the slander, mm and the hearsay that you find on line or on YouTube and certain places that you're dealing with facts because they use sensationalism and emotions to create confusion and divisions. So you have to deal with the facts. A lot of people talk about the case and they don't know the facts of the case. Mm. And when, when you know the facts of the case and you start challenging what they're saying, like, okay, do you know about the case? Have you actually looked at the documentation? Have you studied it? Do you know what it was actually charged for? Etc. Mm. Uh, Etc. Et Do you know that you know there was a lot of media hype and basically chaos and wrong information to sway people's minds? But if you really do want to learn about the case, go to freedoctoryork.com because a lot of the evidence, the documentation, and a timeline of everything that happened is on there freedoctoryork.com. Now, how do you get involved? Well, there are many legal efforts that are taking place. You can support those. Um, you can go to the communities, you know, call the bookstores, um, get involved from the inside out, not from the outside in. Of course, it's a legal case, so certain things are not going to be divulged on, mm. online but get close to the people that have been around, that have, have been studying the case, have been fighting the case for some 20 years now. Really get to know if you're really interested and you can support not only financially, if you want to, but like find information and share it. I don't know, anything you want to add yeah. to that? COINTELPRO, keep, keep saying it. People need to do some research on the, on the program that was created by J. Edgar Hoover, mm. COINTELPRO, which was to stop the rise of the Black Messiah. So that's, yes, that's it. They, they obviously were aware that the, a Black Messiah was gonna come to raise the, the conscious people or the black, the black race and whoever listened to him. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not just, uh, it's just you have what we term principalities in high places. In high places. Yeah. There are those who benefit from the world being um, in chaos, mm. so they can control things. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you are going against the dollar dollar mm. bill, yo, <laughs> they're gonna yeah. yeah, they're gonna come come <laughs> for you, man. So um, just just do your research, get the facts, and you'll find out that we're living in a different day and time. Though um, the dimensional shift is taking place, people are waking up from all walks of life. In terms of consciousness, people want to know the truth mm. because the truth shall what? Make you free. Make you free. Mm. So if you want to be free, you need the truth. You need facts. So get the facts. Um, what can we all do? I just answered that. Yeah, Google doesn't know everything and Google mm. <laughs> is programmed. You've got algorithms and people behind Google. Hello, thank you so much. So who exactly wants to eat us? <laughs> and why are Noapians vegetarians? Right. First of all, um, who want to eat us? <laughs> who want to eat us? Um, why do you go to Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Walmart, and all these shops mm. and buy meat? Mm. Why do you want to eat chickens and goats and Cow, cows and, pig. and pigs <laughs> and um, 
whatever else humans mm. eat as... And humans. Uh, and humans <laughs> as meat. So you have to remember that you have different types of being and there's a, there's a chain of life, mm. you know, and um, some, some beings eat flesh. And unfortunately, to answer the question directly, you have beings, extraterrestrial beings, that do the same thing you do when you go for shopping and buy food. And they like human meat. Mm. And um, remember, these beings are different types of reptilian, draconians, um, beings that eat flesh. You know, like if you go in the jungle, mm. you have certain animals that eat it flesh. And then you have herbivores or those that eat vegetables, you see. So extraterrestrials, disagreeable extraterrestrials, the ones that eat flesh, they like blood meat and they, they're the ones that want to eat those of us who are putting themselves on the menu. Because not everyone, if, you're not, if you don't taste good, they won't eat you. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. Like, um, yeah, like, go on. I think um, um, the, the Draconians had a, um, an agreement with the Palladians that they were going to eat, was it take 3,000? Was it 500? 300,000. 1,000, yeah, mm -hmm. a day. Anyways, whereas before it was RH R, R negative blood type, but now, yeah. You um, just threw it out there. We've got to break that down. <laughs> So, so um, yeah, we have to now explain the Pleiadians, as yeah. you said, right? So, so the Pleiadians are from Arcturus, mm -hmm. and they were food source for the Draconians. Yeah. So rather than them being eaten, they said that we would make a an, substitute. A substitute. Mm. And this was the creation of the, um, the Adamite 6,000 yeah. years ago. Yes. It's like... It's like um, Today, if I'll use a simple example, like we're running out of food, they say, yeah, for example, oh, there's no more food, um, because there's too much population, so there's not enough food to feed the population. So what we would do is let us create GMO foods mm. um, so we can be able to feed the, the world. Mm. So the draconians that were eating the Pleiadians were like, if, if you can leave us, the, the Pleiadians were like, if you will leave us alone, we'll give you something that tastes exactly and just as nice as us if you would leave us alone. And they said, okay. And that's when they went about creating the Adamites race. So if you're hearing these words like draconians, reptilians, Pleiadians, they're different types of extraterrestrial yeah. beings. Um, and they come here for shopping, just like you mm. go to, to Sainsbury's or whatever. And some of them abduct people, um, the agreements that are, are, are made with certain governments, um, and then some of them don't stick to the agreements. They start to take more than mm. they agreed to take, you know. But yeah, that's a quick answer. Um, we can go into more. And you said, and why Anuapians vegetarians? I don't know where you read that from. <laughs> There's no statement mm. that Anuapians are vegetarians. Um, the, 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 there are suggestions that a vegetarian or a vegan diet mm. is best for you, but you should wean yourself from eating anything that has parents. I know the smart people are going to say, but plants have parents too. <laughs> yeah, but they're talking about blood. Because mm. remember, the blood is where the life is in, and that blood, the spirit has the memories and the energies of the animal. Mm. This is why sometimes people will go to sleep and have certain dreams after eating a fish or something, some animal that was brutally killed mm. in a particular way and that trauma and that energy is within the food and then you will have nightmares or you'll have those memories reliving through you, you see. So there are reasons why we are from natural nature so we can blend with natural nature, you know, but it's unnatural for us to be eating meat. Eating meat. <laughs> yeah. So that's why, you know, it's quite simple to be honest. Um, okay, let's move on. So, so not, not all Nuwapians are vegetarians. Mm. Some are vegetarians weaning themselves off and working their way because cheese is not good for you yeah. either because cheese mucus. creates yeah. a lot of mucus mm. and we are also aware of the Dr. Sebi diet, for example, dealing with the science of 
um, alkaline, alkaline mm. versus mm. red meat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, red, red meat it deals with acidic, right? Acidic, so we, yeah, yeah we, we try to keep away from the acidic mm. diets because they create an environment conducive for diseases. Mm. Yeah, so that's why we say, yeah, lean to the alkaline. Remember, water, the pH of seven is a perfect balance. And, you know, seven or, seven or above is what you should be trying to maintain, which is uh, the alkaline side. And then you go the other way is acidic. And you can just look online and search for foods with a pH value mm. that is acidic and foods that are or have a pH value of more alkaline. So yeah, that's why we don't eat cheese and so on. Why was Zwen, a reptilian, chosen as Enlil's gatekeeper mm. instead of an actual Anunnaki? Were these beings... Uh, all right, again, uh, we've broken this down before. A lot of times, it's just programming. We're so programmed that when we hear Anunnaki, we forget to say, okay, Anunnaki just describes mm. a group of different types of beings. Yeah, so we've broken down before. Anunnaki means Anu sent beings to the planet Ki, in groups of 50s. In groups of 50s, right? So that's what Anunnaki is, is explaining a situation, an incident that took place. Mm. But who did he send down in groups of 50s? You're right. You have reptilians, draconians, Bigfoot, all, Bigfoot which Shaggy. are Sasquatch, mm. Syrians. There were different types of beings that came from different star constellations. So, yes, um, Zuen, um, Chosen as Enlil's gatekeeper. I'm not quite sure what I mean by mm. Enlil's gatekeeper. I mean, this might be talking about that, um, what the master broke down with the tablets, tablets of destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not fully clear instead of an actual Anunnaki. So he would be an Anunnaki, Anunnaki mm. is what I'm saying. Were these beings, oh, it cuts off. Were these beings, and it doesn't finish off, so I don't know what the rest of that was supposed to be. Uh, yeah, uh, you need to give us more. When you say chosen as a Nils gatekeeper, that's not clear. <clears throat> and also, when you ask us questions and you're quoting things, please give us the references as well mm. so we can uh, actually look into it. Um, question, every time, we, every time we reincarnate, do we continue to have the same blood type? Um, it depends who you reincarnate into, as in your family, because not all your family don't all have the same blood type because of the mm. mixture. So if you have a family member that was mixed with somebody else, they're going to have different blood types. And like my brother said before, originally there were no negative mm. blood types amongst... Um, and every time... And when you say we, I don't know, I'm assuming... I don't know who the we is because the Nagaru or the Negroid have different blood types. Originally, they were all positive blood types. Um, it was when the um, mixing of different species or different extraterrestrials, um, these Elohim, Anakim that we're talking about, that we started to get the RH negative mm. um, and all the negative blood types. So the we, um, I'm assuming you mean Nagarus. Um, so yeah, so let me make that a little bit clearer. So as I explained before, your bloodline or relatives, you may have relatives going back thousands of thousands of years, if not even millions of years. Mm. And these relatives will have different offspring. And you can reincarnate in one of those offsprings from a very distant time. So it depends on that family that you're reincarnating into, what their bloodline is. So no, it's not going to be the same blood type. Mm. All right, let's move on. Is there only one creator of the entire universe or multiverse? <laughs> Second, who or what created Anunnaki? Um, this creator question keeps mm. coming up over and over and over the again. Religious aspect of yeah. that thinking. I think revisit our original first video, get our book, The Spiritual You, The Fast Track, um, because we kind of cover the basics, but 
you have to break down what you're calling creator. Um, when you said the creator of the entire universe, we already gave you the hierarchy in terms of the different beings. So when you say the entire universe, we already broke down that there are different universes. Yeah, universe, yeah there's seven universes. Yeah. And, and then you go beyond that, you start going into, as you mentioned, the multiverse and the omniverse. And they keep growing because, as we say, you're dealing with the all expanding. So things are constantly expanding, um, growing, contracting. That's the word I was trying mm. to find. So exploding and contracting, create and forming new ones all the time. This is why now they use like the telescopes that can look further into space, like the James Webb telescope. Um, and they're, they're discovering more and more universes all the time. So there isn't a one creator of the universe or multiverse. The, the nearest to that is going to be the Parnatharu, um, who are elemental beings, the guardians of the galaxies, that they actually do create what you know, you're calling mm. universes and the you know, celestial bodies. Um, I remember the master just saying in, in other parts of the galaxy, female, there's female that are ruling. Ruling, yeah. So, yeah. yeah this so one, it depends on where you go. One in the, business. In the cosmos. <clears throat> um, these, these questions, there's three questions. If humans are gods, can we attain prosperity, protection and spiritual enlightenment without rituals targeted towards other energies? See, the thing is as well, right, when you say if humans are gods, it's like, are humans gods or are they not gods? And what is your definition or understanding of what a god is? Um, can we attain prosperity? Again, prosperity is a matter of, it's subjective. Um, but yes, we can, human gods can. There are human gods and there are different types of gods. Um, God is basically anyone or anything in control on another thing or person. Yes. Yeah. Protection. Um, can we attain prosperity, protection and spiritual enlightenment? Spiritual endarkenment. Mm. Because, um, again, these are all religious buzzwords um, to claim that you now know a lot of information or know more about the, the spiritual realm without rituals targeted towards, yeah, um, rituals, depends on the ritual mm. and what type of ritual you're talking about. Um, we don't partake or do with any blood mm. sacrifices or those types of rituals to any beings. Um, is it possible to train our minds to align with these intentions and outcomes without the physical enactment? of rituals and ceremonies that question is again mm. all over the place but um, yes you can we don't you, don't you your mind is you can align your mind by tapping into those mental the mental realm um, your mind can basically help you to man, manifest or I say your mind but mm. your portion of your mind yeah so a simple analogy to explain this is like Imagine you're on a computer network and you have your computer, mm -hmm. your laptop, right? That's connected to the network. But within your computer, you have your hard drive where you can pull information and save information too. So your network could be the internet, which is a global network, right? And you can pull information from that network. But, you know, your portion of it is what you're calling your mind. So you, you bring information that you can utilize or use to help you with whatever you're trying to, to achieve or do. So you can pull some information to do with music, mm -hmm. you can pull information to do with building, science, so building. Yeah. yeah, so most people go to <laughs> Google isn't it? to pull information. Mm -hmm. They check it out, research it, and they take what is useful and they discard that which is not useful. So yes, your intentions can align with your, yeah, with your mind to bring about outcomes without rituals and ceremonies, yes. Was Noah's Ark a boat or a spaceship? Ah, 
Good question. Um, as far back as I can remember, what the master just said, the, um, it was a ship. So if you go into Genesis 7, 17 or 17, 7, it yeah. talks about the ark rising above the earth. Mm. So we know boats don't raise. And then it descended onto the waters. And the surface or the, so, yeah. Yeah, the face of the waters. But yeah, I, I'm going to get the, the, the book and then um, give it a, the name of the task so you can research. But, but even before we kind of go into that, because a lot of times people do not read the full story, because if mm. you read it with an open mind, like you say, you clearly see um, that it's talking about a craft raising above the mm. planet. Yeah. Uh, and but even before that, the whole Noah story, we because a lot of people that just come into the religious books and read the Bible, mm. they read about you know, from Genesis, and then it gets to the point where the, the world was wiped out and Noah, this character Noah, was building a boat in the desert. <laughs> um, and then they had to take two of every animal into it. Crazy. The, but when you break it down, it doesn't make sense no. because wherever Noah was, the mm. location, like if we were in London, for example, and we're building on this ship, this, mm. this ark, how are we going to get two of animals from Australia? or two of the same animals Antarctica. from Antarctica, <laughs> right? Because certain animal species are only in certain mm. parts of the world. So first of all, you have to debunk that story in terms of did it exist? Was there a person even called Noah? And then you go to the, you know, like the tablets or the scriptures before, um, like the Sumerian, and you get yeah. the sto same story of with a person called Utnafishtun. Utnafishtun. Yeah. You go into ancient Egypt, the same story from a person called Sen Senefru. Um, and the reason I mention about the animals is because with right mind, with right knowledge, we break it down that what you're talking about is a laboratory, mm. yeah? It was a laboratory and they were taking the cells of different species. You know, like if, you, if you're a biochemist or mm. whatever, you take the cells and then you put them into little glass jars so that you can regenerate from those cells, like our ancestors used to do with the mummies. You see, so a lot of these biblical stories are not what you're reading them in English out to be, you know. So I hope that's answered your question. But yeah, the direct question, it was a, spa it was a spacecraft, yeah. yeah? I'm a member of the voodoo community and I realise that the deity spirits that we summon have similar stories to the Anunnaki. I heard someone ask this question but didn't ask it the right way. So my question is, are the deities or of African spirituality, the Anunnaki, or something completely different? Again, African spirituality is very mm. broad. Um, because you've got different tribes in Africa that practice different things that they will term African spirituality. Mm. The original African spirituality is Wu Sabat, which is animism. animism. But even then, when you Google and search animism today, you get different breakdowns of what that is considered to be. And Anim animism for us as Wu or Musbatu is that we're dealing with nature, and our ancestors given reverence and respect to those beings because we know that we come from them. Mm. But then you have influences, religious influences from different um, races that have now embedded, you know, different things like what you're saying in voodoo with the blood sacrifices, cutting and killing chickens, mm. sprinkling blood and having pieces of cloth and stone. There's always something that you've got to give mm. in order to get something from these beings. So, but when you take it to the different ancestors of the Africans, you will find out that they all kind of tie back into the Panatharu, um, which even if you're coming from the Yoruba perspective, mm. if you're coming from the Kemetian perspective, it's the same beings. So yes, people will say Anunnaki, but we are more, the only way Anunnaki has got into the African is by the mixture of In Inky. Inky, Inky, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's, some people are calling on these beings 
um, Enki and Enlil of the Anunnaki stories, but really, when you know the difference, mm -hmm. we call on the Panataru yeah. as our ancestors. Well, which, which, what they were called the Natiru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's a matter of tongue, isn't mm -hmm. it? The, the, the language. But um, so uh, the question was, my question is: Are the deities of African spirituality the Anunnaki, or something completely different? It depends. Like we said, if you went to the Dogon tribe, for example, the, who they're calling on is the Nomos. Nomos, yeah. You see, so it all depends on which African spirituality you're talking mm. about, yeah? Uh, okay, let's go on. Question. At age of 14, I passed, I passed in a gas leak. I rose out of body and was lifted in levels. I was still me, laughing out loud, and I cried out three times, help. I watched my mother go into pure panic, open windows and began to beat the crap out of me. My question is, why was I sent back from the peace I can't explain? A peace I can find on this plane. Why my, why my question as returning to, to live a very hard life, not fitting in with my family anymore and knowing things ahead. Ah, uh, it's a lot, isn't it? Mm. Um, I don't, what I don't get in the question, if it is a question, is that... I think, why did he come back, you're saying? Yeah, I get that part, mm. but the bit where he says, I passed at 14. Yeah. Is he saying he came I'm, back? Because sure. if he passed, it sounds like he passed, I thought he passed through gas. No, no, he's <laughs> saying that there was a gas leak. Okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. He yeah. passed as in crossover. Okay. And then he rose out of his body and was lifted in levels. I was still me laughing out loud and I cried out three times help. I watched my mother go into pure panic, open the window. So it sounds like right, he passed and he watched it. He had an out of body experience mm. and he's watching his mother beating the crap out of him and brought him back because she said, Windows. She opened the windows and began to beat the crap out of my of me. Yeah. So I think that's how he came back. Mm. And he said, "Why was I sent back from the peace? Because he went to a peaceful realm. I can't explain. Um, then a peace I can't can find on. I, I think he's saying I can't find on this plane. Why? My question is returning to live a very hard life, not fitting with my family anymore. And I, I kind of get it now. Mm. So." The reason you came back is because it was not your time so, to go. Yeah. It wasn't your time. And you experiencing that and coming back. And then now you're, as you're saying, you feel like you're alienated and you don't fit in with your family anymore. It's because now you know things ahead of time. You're getting clairvoyance and certain powers. It's because people sometimes have to go through these experiences mm. to realise that what they're being taught in churches and religion, it's not accurate. Mm. So when they come back, they're not able to give and guide and help other people to say that, you know, it's not what you think. Mm. Um, there is other realms. Um, and as you say, now you know things and you're trying to speak to people that maybe can't relate to you. This is the journey of awakening and opening your third eye and, and realising that, We've been lied to, yep. you know, and I think that's what we say you're awoke, isn't it? A lot of people <laughs> don't want to wake up and see the truth. They mm. tell you that in the movie The Matrix, Matrix yeah. <laughs> unplugged from The Matrix, so that you can really see what's going on. Um, they live, the movie They Live. The Jim Carrey one. <laughs> the, yeah, um, that Jim Carrey one. What's it called again? Um, I can't remember it now, but another yeah. one. Uh, the Truman Show. Truman Show, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, there are many movies that try to explain to you that you're living in a simulation. Mm. Um, the real you is your soul. The real essence of you is not the physical body that deals with physical senses and only the physical world. So that's what happened. We got there in the end, mm. but please learn to ask the question <laughs> so that it's very clear. Question, appreciate the wisdom you've been sharing with us all. My question is, I keep on seeing double numbers. 11, 11, 22, 22, 15, 15, and many more. 
I see them nearly all the time unintentionally. People call them angel numbers. I would like mm -hmm. to ask if seeing them means you're aligned. My friend, um, someone else says, same here. I see these quite a bit and don't know what the truth about is. I see them too. I've been seeing them for a very, very long time and many people do. Um, it kind of got more intense round about 2019, 2020 um, <coughs> for myself and for other people that, um, that see them. And I was always trying to find that as well. And then I, I did some research and I got the same thing, angel numbers. But I did ask one of our uh, brothers and teachers and if the master had ever spoken about it. Mm. And yeah, he was saying that, that it's an alignment time. It's a synchronicity with the dimensional shift and things that are happening. Um, it could be even information. Because remember, information comes from out formation. So you get out formation being sent and then you process that into information. information yeah. yeah, so it could be messages. But yeah, I was, I was told it was synchronicity and alignment with things that are happening in, in nature, uh, maybe even messages from, from crafts and things like that. But I can't, you know what I mean, give you your specific, you know what I mean, situation. But yeah, it's something that I've noticed, and, and again, yeah, I can, I can relate to it, is what I'm saying, because I see it all the time. Mm. If I show you my phone right now, because every time I see it, I take a, a what they call it, a screenshot, sure, yeah. and I've got loads <laughs> and loads and loads, because it's like, at one point it was, almost like driving you crazy it's like why do i keep seeing these numbers <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm still hoping that we will get a better answer mm. from the master um teacher numerology as, as some, mm. yeah because it's numerology it ties into a lot so i guarantee you now other people are going to start saying yeah i see them too so <laughs> yeah um i can't give you 100 percent, but that's what i've got so far um unable to get book fast track please provide seller information in the usa where the book can be purchased. It's, it's online, so you can get it online. Um, ds4s.net, that's um, D for Delta, S for Sugar, the number four, and the what's the, S again, which is uh, Sugar again, um, or Sigma, dot net, N-E-T. All right, you can get it from there. And we're looking at, yeah, seeing if we can get distributors in the, in the US. So yes, until that time, unfortunately, you can get it online. All right, um, I had a reoccurring dream in my youth of a craft glowing with green light in a black void area. Dr. Z, Dr. Malachi Z. York has so many books. I was wondering what books should I read to obtain knowledge of sleep, travel, an astral projection, and why does it become weaker as we age? Okay, so um, he's got many books. Man from Planet Risk. Man from Planet mm -hmm. Risk, The Science of Healing, mm -hmm. um, Science of Creation, The Spiritual You After the Physical You Dies, The 24 Elders. El Mugaraj. Uh, Mugaraj, um, many, many scrolls. Um, there are many recordings as well on YouTube. Um, who and what you oh, are. Yeah. Um, oh, what are you? Sorry, who and what are you? Mm. Or who and, who and what you are. Well, yeah, mm. you can Google um, YouTube that. Um, yeah, so what was the second part? Um, yeah, why does it become weaker as we age? Because we get dumbed down. It's actually interesting, I was speaking to a sister that came in to the store today and she was saying how from a young age she was able to be clairvoyant and able to see things and hear things and um, her parents were from a Christian background and they, they dumbed her down and just basically told her she couldn't speak about these experiences mm. and over time she was suppressing it. It's the same with most of us because when you grow from a child, you're still connected to that spiritual, etheric world. And um, as you get older, you get more dense and your parents, if they're not spiritually aware, they dismiss anything you have, right. you know. Um, and so after a while, you suppress it. But if it's in you, it's in your DNA, it will eventually re-emerge. Mm. Um, and, and so, yes, you, you become weaker because of your diet, 
of the things you start partaking, you start to block that connection basically um, because you have an etheric cord. If your etheric cord is open, it's able to get information from the other realms. Mm. If it's closed, your pineal gland is closed, then you don't receive as much information. And then when you start to, as we say, eat meats, mm. bad diets, um, bad exposure to different things, it, it, it builds a, a crystallization around you, around your aura, around your ability to, to tap into the other realm. So it calcifies. It calcifies yeah. you, mm. that's it. So you have to learn, and they put, unfortunately, the things we drink, the water, etc., mm. etc. They put um, um, things in toothpaste, is it? Yeah, yeah. Fluoride, fluoride. That's the word I was trying to find. Yeah, they put fluoride. Fluoride is one of the things that calcifies your pineal um, gland. So mm. you have to learn how to clean yourself inside out, which is something that the master teacher partner Bab Yanun keeps telling us to do, because. You need to cleanse yourself mm. of the metals and the ions and the things that um, cut you off from that spiritual realm. Um, okay, let's move on. Greetings, student teachers. In the last Q&A, my two other questions were not answered, so I have asked them again here. What different levels are we meant to cleanse within ourselves in order to elevate our souls and improve our chances of not being food for other extraterrestrials. For example, what we eat, how we think, how we walk. Okay, so... This just answered, didn't they? Well, yeah, we literally <laughs> just touched on that. But to be a little bit more specific, most of us eat things that are weighing us down, mm. uh, more dense, because the meals are too heavy. Yeah. Meals are supposed to be light and nutritious. So it's about the nutrition that you're getting. And the amount that we eat as well. And the amount that we eat as three well. Three times a day, sometimes some people. Right. Who told you you had to eat three <laughs> meals a day? Who told you what to eat for for breakfast? Why do you eat cereal and yeah. and you know and eggs and bacon and sausages and all of that? So it's all about the programming that we have received from a child mm. to adult. So what you have to do is study. Yeah, we we talked about the alkaline yeah. and acidic diet. So. You have to cleanse your colon because mm. you have an intestine, you have different parts of your body, your lungs, your liver, and they have a specific function or job that they do. So if you're doing things that are clogging up your arteries, mm. your, you know, your blood is not flowing or your blood is toxic, there's a lot of acid, um, you have to basically do a lot of different cleansing like the colon, remove the mucus, mm -hmm. um, eat more fruits and vegetables and alkaline-based things, drink lots of water, lots of watery foods. Um, the master has given us many tips and advice on diet, but he hasn't written a specific book just mm. on diet because he said that we won't follow Put it, it anyway. Yeah. But he has written a book called Purity and Neatness, which gives you a lot of guidelines and information on what to mm. not to eat. So processed food not good for you. Avoid processed. So things that are processed are things that end up white, mm. for example. So rice has a lot of glucose, mm. um, or should I say it has a lot of starch, and the starch turns to glucose. Glucose is sugar. Sugar then gives you a lot of things to do with um, um, what do you call it? When blood, when you have too much uh, arthritis, yeah. Um, diabetic. High blood, yeah, diabetic. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, you become diabetic. Um, so, all eliminate processed food: white rice, white sugar, mm. white flour. Um, if you're black, white women. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, you might have to leave that one. No, for real. Um, Eliminate white sugar, white flour, white rice, uh, because these are processed, so they take away all the white, did mm. I say white flour already? Yeah. Mm. So try to eat um, the more authentic version. So sugar, you don't really need sugar. You can get sugar sources from mm. fruits. Um, yeah, so honey, um, proper honey though, because a lot of honeys now have a lot of sugar. 
Yeah, so um, I hope we've answered that question. What else was it? How we think. Yeah, think positive. Think um, how you walk, your posture. posture yeah. yeah, so um, the shoes you wear have a big effect on how you walk. This was one of the reasons why he, um, when we went back to our culture of being the ancient you know, tribes of Native Americans like the Yamasee, Washita, etc. We mm. wore cowboy clothes and cowboy yeah. boots because the cowboy boots help to straighten you up in terms mm. of your posture. posture yeah. um, women shouldn't really wear six inch high heels because that posture it can affect your reproductive mm. system, you know. So these are tips, but yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, if the mind is the source creator, that manifests our physical experiences, then wouldn't you then say Dr. Malachi manifested the experience of being imprisoned? As a high priest, wouldn't he know these knowledge systems of creation? These people that try to be slick, um, <laughs> it's actually quite funny because you say, if the mind is a source mm. creator. Who said the mind was the source creator? That's a statement or leading mm. to something you want to say. So it's like the premise you start off with is wrong. We don't say that the mind is the source creator. Mm. What we say is the mind is, a, 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 there's a realm called a mental, mental reservoir. reservoir or the mental realm where you tap into. That mm. mental reservoir is not the only one because you still have the etheric realms that are higher. So um, the mind is the creator in the sense that you have to think before you bring that which you think into the physical mm. realm or manifest it. But it, it's not the only source or the source creator. Um, and yes, it says, then wouldn't you say Malachi manifested the experience of being in prison? No, because it's not everything you think of that you manifest. Mm. Or it's not everything that you think of that is your own thought. Mm. So um, you have, you know, higher beings that deal with natural nature. Okay? Natural nature, that they, like we say, is the combination of all existence and conscious gases. And this is what we call the forces of nature. Yeah, the forces of nature um, choose or manifest things in the physical world. Um, for particular purposes and reasons. So he was chosen by the forces of nature to be the one to come and renew the new cycle of 24,000 years. And as part of that, being a reformer, is that you're going to face adversaries. Mm. And you're going to face those who are trying to hold on to the old ways and the old systems that uh, unfortunately will try to stop you. And one of the ways they're trying to stop him is by the imprisonment, mm. the forced incarceration. But that doesn't mean it's over, because mm. people talk like this is the end, but we're, it's an ongoing process. And this is where you have different sides. People call it Armageddon, they call mm. it the war of good and bad, agreeable, Rapture, disagreeable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're about positive change mm. and he's coming with that change, then You've got to align yourself with, as the Bible puts it, Michael and his angels fought against the, the dragon, dragon and, and his, his angel. angels. And who prevailed? Michael. <laughs> there you go. So you're watching a movie that is not finished yet. <laughs> All right. Um, right. Wadu, student teachers. Um, a lot of people mix, mix up the language. What do is buy? Right. So you're saying buy before you ask the question. <laughs> but um, you mean Rahul Bat, student teachers. Mm. Rahul Bat's greetings. Yeah. Thank you for the truth. After watching all of your videos, I've been hearing and reading a lot of the masters, teachers, scrolls, and lectures. Therefore, I have some questions I would like to ask. One is cannabis related to the frequency we vibrate on, or in any way to our dreams? Yes, it is. Um, because you have to remember that it changes your vibration mm. um, and you can tap into different realms. 
because what you have to realize is that the parts of your brain that interact with the higher realms, like what pituitary we call gland. Yep, yep. The, yep, yep, pituitary gland, the, the cerebellum, um, mm -hmm. which is the hippocampus region of your brain, it deals with like hallucination. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're tapping into that vibration, a lot of people call it holding a meds, mm -hmm. uh, which they, that's short form for meditation. But you can actually meditate and access those energies or those vibrations without mm. substances. Um, it makes it easier. This is why people are they induce that state with alcohol and with you know what I mean, drugs and mushrooms and all kinds of things to stimulate that part of you. But you can do it naturally anyway. So you you don't really need any form of intoxicant to do this. But yes, then it will give you, you can see all kinds of things and experience mm. different things and you can become paranoid. And yeah, so yes, it does relate to the frequencies you vibrate on and um, in any way to your dreams. Question two, I used to have lucid dreams since I was a child and then I lost it. Nowadays, it almost never happens and then it cuts off. Um, I don't see read more, so... Yes, this is why we say, if you can do something naturally, okay, let me give a simple example. All right, let's say you get a headache, and every time you get a headache, you take pills. After a while, the pill is not as effective anymore, mm. because, you, you know, your body kind of gets used mm. to it, whereas if you were able to use natural remedies and natural methods then you will still be able to do that all the time. So, um, yes, when you use artificial things to do things, eventually, it, that, because you have to go into like the DNA and so on mm. as well, it actually then inhibits it. So, um, yeah, for example, there are natural remedies for um, people that have erectile problems, for example then they will introduce Viagra mm. and pills and all mm. these kind of things where men can become reliant on that. Yeah. And so when they don't have it, they're no longer able to do it naturally. Mm. Whereas if you figured out what was causing it, which could be diet, stress, diet, mm. blood flow, certain things that are causing it and deal with it naturally, you can resolve it. Mm. I hope that example helps you but yes you don't need to so yeah you will lose it if you use synthetic as opposed to dealing with it naturally this is why natural herbs natural remedies are actually more preferred over artificial artificial yeah. all right coming to the last few questions what does it mean when the bible says let the dead bury the dead also your views on sowing and reaping Again, that's so broad, isn't it? Like, where is where in the Bible are you referring to? Because we need quotes like, let the dead bury, bury the dead. dead. Yeah, what quote is that? Um, I can try and give you an answer, but um, it would just be based on what I think and not what you're quoting. But the, the living dead, people are what we call the walking dead, mm. or they're dead anyway, dead mentally, and they, some people are dead spiritually. And so... When people die, those same people are burying those mm. people. So, you know, you got it's like it's like saying the blind leading the blind. Mm. It's the same kind of principle because if you don't know where you're going or you can't see clearly to where you're going, mm. how can you lead somebody yeah. else? Because all you're going to do is lead them blindly. Mm. So the dead um, burying the dead is like, yeah. So I, I, I don't, I, if that's not related at all, give us the quote. Mm. And we'll try and answer it next time. Also, your views on sowing and reaping. Yes, um, sowing and reaping, not only relating to seeds, but um, as in, you know, when you plant seeds in the ground, that's sowing. Mm. You have to sow and nurture it. Nurturing is you need the elements to grow. So you need the sun, you need the water, you need the soil, you need the air. This is where our ancient ancestors mm dealt with in terms of tamare or tamu nefuset meaning ta planet earth 
Mu dealing water. with water, Nefu dealing with the air, yeah. mm -hmm. Set dealing with the sun. Yeah. Yeah. And so you need those elements to grow. And it's different from people thinking things happen like that, mm. you know, because natural nature needs, you need to sow seeds and grow them. So if you're going to be successful in life, you can't just want somebody's success. Um, you have to plant the seeds, you know, if you have to invest in yourself to study, to read, to graduate, to then be able to be successful. Um, one of the problems is the, the jealousies and envies comes from people who don't put in the work mm. and they just want to have what somebody else has who has sold many seeds. If you're going to have, a, say, a business, you're going to sow the seeds, you have to work on that business and, you know, become a good business person to make that business profitable to get the reaping. Yeah, so, people don't like, don't like to go through the process. Yeah. No patience, as Malika said, El Sabor. It's like, yeah. People, yeah, people don't have the patience. They want it yeah. instantly. And our, our ancestors, the Nataru, mm. they didn't go, let there be light and let there be... <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, it sounds like a magician just mm. saying, make things happen like this. But the thing is, when we then say, if you accept that God did that and he can do that, mm. and then we say, all right, tell him to go, let all the problems of the world That's be gone. Right. Let all the diseases mm. be gone. You know, let all the hatred and the war. Mm. In that instance, oh, he can't do that. Mm. <laughs> but, you see, so um, our ancestors, they know that things come from a seed being planted, like in the sperm, mm. being planted into the woman, into the ovum, the real goddess. And then she grows and nurtures that baby. And then it comes out as a god, a goddess. So she, as a god, creates more gods and goddesses. So this and, is and what the conditions have reaping. to be right as well. Yes, for that, for that, for that process. For that, yeah, that life form to exist. Yeah, so it's, that's uh, yeah, that's sowing and reaping. So um, there's also what people call karma. Um, what you what what negativity you put out into the world, will, you know, come back to you, and what positivity you put out into the world will come back to you. It might not even be you. It might be your parents and ancestors and offspring, yeah. offspring. Mm. this is why it's good to sow the right seeds so that you will receive the right reaping mm. through your offspring you know because there's also something called generational curses right okay, yeah. where people mm. you know what their parents 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 or whoever did manifest in them so like in the in the biblical sense when you're talking about you know genetics you can do something put something into your body and it will manifest in the fourth generation or you you know like in the the leprosy and yeah. the, the curses that you know manifested in the fourth generation of Noah's children through Ham because it says you know cursed will be Ham mm -hmm. all right um no his son which was Canaan Can not not Ham mm -hmm. himself so the, he came out of Ham all right, um, what are we doing for time? We've over a little bit. Okay, last one. Oh no, good to see you both, much love. Good to see you too. Um, last question, what should you do if you have been contacted by ETs? How can you find out who they are? <laughs> that, I think that's a good question to end on. Uh, yeah, what should you do if you have been contacted by ETs? Right, number one. How have you been contacted? Mm. Because there's different types of contact. This is why we say the f first kind, second kind, third, third kind, kind fourth and fourth kind. kind. So what type of contact is it? Because it could be a vision. Right. Mm. <laughs> the fourth kind is the one where they came physically yeah. and you know you saw the third kind, visitations and so on. So we have to be clear on what we mean by have been contacted by ETs. Now, e ETs, for those who don't know, we're talking about extraterrestrials which extraterrestrial mm. because there's so many different types of extraterrestrials and which ones contacted you what did they look like mm. did they communicate with you did they speak um and if they did i'm surprised you didn't ask them any questions yeah, yeah. because you're <laughs> saying how can you find out who they are it depends on what they look like mm. where they're from and could you communicate with them and ask them questions because there are so many different species and types of extraterrestrials. Um, 
So I'm sort of, yeah, knowing that'd be a good book for them to, to pick up. Yeah, the Akasha Records, oh. my brother, the extraterrestrial. Um, I've actually got, okay, I haven't got any. Um, um, yeah, this is a good one. Pa Anunnaki. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the biblical and Quranic race. A lot of people keep talking about this Anunnaki. It's actually interesting because most people who come from a religious background, whether it's um, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, mm -hmm. they kind of graduate into this Anunnaki story. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the Anunnaki, so everyone wants to know who are the Anunnaki. Mm. So yeah, that's a good book to find out in terms of who these beings are, these extraterrestrial beings. But yeah, um, on the next episode, it's the last one for this series. Uh, we're going to have a lot of surprises for you. And um, if you haven't had your question answered yet, you've got one more opportunity next week to get your questions answered. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, mm. please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And so you can be notified of anything we'll submit. Um, and all the things that we're, we're doing. Um, spread the word. <laughs> yes, spread the word. Support, yeah. um, you know, help with the legal fight. Um, yeah, do everything you can to upgrade yourself, you know. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, my brother? No, yeah, just um, check out the videos. If you've got any questions, come down. Tune into the um, clubhouse where we have student teachers there on there as well, breaking down the information. Yeah, just come down to the shop. And, uh, yeah, make it a personal and mm. physical experience as well. Don't just be online, you know. If you're close to a store, go and visit, you know. Go and talk to the brothers and sisters. Um, you know, look at our websites, mm. unitedsabeansworldwide.com, the chat.co.uk, and... Um, yeah, keep, keep the questions coming. All right, so until the next episode, we'd like to say, Wadu, Wadu. Wu Ashok Likum. <laughs>